Folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I'm your host, Eric Tenko, your bartender in the OSR. Hey, I'm going to do something I never do. Before I step into our topic today, if you enjoy what myself and my co-hosts and our guests do on this channel, subscribe. All right, we're trying to hit 1,500 before the end of the summer. I'd love to hit it before the end of July. So 1,500 subscribers, not that hard, right? We're just over 100 away. Subscribe, like, comment, you know. You know the drill. You've probably heard it on thousands of other YouTube channels. So there's been a bit of a controversy the last couple of days because one bookshelf updated their uh, conduct guidelines. And there was a rule that uh, myself and others have been calling the Venga rule that was, uh, or Venger, was recently added. So Steve Weick, um, I believe it's Weick. It could be Weck. Uh, Steve, I, I I should know better how to pronounce I before E. Steve, actually, if it's like my real last name, then it would be weak. But I don't. That doesn't sound right, right? So, uh, this week we shared an updated version of our publisher conduct guidelines. Enough people have been asking questions and making some assumptions about this document. Now, I'm going to say myself. I I went to the Wayback Machine. I could not find a prior version of the document, but they say the document has been in place since shortly after 2004 when they launched the company. And it's been updated a few times, but it's a little has been changed since 2006 until the current changes, which it's simply an update. But it's an update with a lot of changes. POD process and print proofs. None of you give a shit about that, right? New material. Uh, this is what's important, right? This is the new material. This is what was added. And I was pretty sure these are the parts that were added because it seemed that it was a response to recent stuff. Beyond the change outlined above, the only new additions to the conduct guidelines, the only new additions are three sections. So that's not only. We've added three sections. Treatment of staff, social media behavior, and hostile marketing. Our goal in adding these sections is to protect both our users and our team from predatory individuals peddling misinformation and people making unwarranted personal attacks. Okay, let's see where that goes. Treatment of staff. This section should be pretty self-explanatory. If you are being abusive or making personal attacks against any employee of one bookshelf, privately or publicly, we may not wish to continue doing business with you. Fair enough. I can't argue with that one, right? There's no argument there. Social media behavior. This is the one that was getting people a little concerned. This one deserves a bit of explanation since it's the new, it's the one new section has inspired the most questions and assumptions. We are not interested in policing the social media of every publisher. People tend to think of Drive Through RPG as some faceless, monolithic corporation, but we are a relatively small company with under 40 employees in this hobby. That's a large number of employees. Our publisher relations team, number seven, and we're busy enough already. We couldn't police everyone's social media even if we wanted to, and we would rather have a conversation with you about what is making you unhappy with our site or service to see if we can help. Here's the main thing, though. We've had publishers make libelous statements about our site, services, and staff before, and some of our employees have been docs. Being doc sucks. Been there. I've been the victim. My wife's been the victim. My mother's been the victim. And... I am like 99.94% sure like ivory soap is pure. Who docks me, right? Who docks us? If you are making legitimate complaints about your site or tools or sir, about our site or tools or service, then we aren't going to come looking for you. Now, what is a legitimate complaint? I, I, I hate that. I don't mean to be that asshole, but I need to be that asshole. What is a legitimate complaint? It, it, who do, obviously, one bookshelf slash drive through decides which complaints are legitimate and which ones aren't. We'll take it in stride and try to do better, although we'd rather hear from you directly so we can do better and try to help you. But if you are maliciously using your platform or your social capital to exoriate us or your complaints are false. Now, do you see there's a difference? And again, I'm not judging here, but 
they're saying if you are maliciously using your platform or your social capital to put us over the coals, right? Or your complaints are false. So you can have a legitimate complaint, but because you're using, mm, I think Steve's going to have to explain that one a bit better because that's that's not going to make people happy, right? I have a legitimate complaint. I have, I don't know, over 3,000 Facebook followers. I have a channel that's nearly 1,400 YouTube viewers. Probably the most read blog in the OSR. If I make a complaint, am I maliciously using uh, my platform? I don't know. My complaint, it, they're not saying if my complaints are false and I'm using my platform. If I'm maliciously using that platform to put them over the coals, or anybody is, or your complaints are false, and you haven't bothered to reach out to us so we can try to fix whatever is upsetting you, then that's a different story. So, oh, oh. so before you go public, you've got to go private. Right? That, that's, that's really what they're saying there. And if you went private and your problems are still there and we don't think that your complaint is legitimate, we think your complaint is false, even though you might think it's legitimate. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, balls in the air there that are going to come down in directions that uh, aren't going to be well explained with this. This is, and not really, and I'm reading this in real time with you folks. I haven't read this ahead of time. So, hostile marketing. This one was added as a response to a small number of malef, mal, malef, I can't get that word right, malefactors, people acting with malfeasance in mind. Small number. Here's the number I think it is. Um, we have dealt with in recent years. I can think of, again, one person who has done this repeated times in recent years who have consciously and maliciously manipulated our policies. That's never good. I, I can understand that you'd be upset as a publisher or as a, as a marketplace when somebody... It's happened with me. You know, I tell some people, cut it out on the Facebook side, so then they're like, oh, well, I'm going to time out the Facebook side. I'm going to stalk that same individual now on the YouTube side. Why would, why would you do that, right? Because technically you didn't tell me I couldn't. But now they're, they're making rules. Let me call out this section of our product content guidelines, which have also existed for as long as one bookshelf, which have but which have also been amended a couple of times over the years. Okay. Neither your work, description, nor any promotional material, including blog posts or press releases. Interesting there. Blog posts. So it's off content site, right? It isn't just site at one. Uh, it isn't just your uh, promotional materials. Or it isn't just your splash page on one bookshelf, your company site, your blog post, any press release. Um, Neither your work description nor any promotional material, including blog posts or press releases, may contain, so this is all verboten, racist, homophobic, discriminatory, or other repugnant views, overt political agendas or views. Overt political agendas. We've seen that happen, right? When somebody put ACAP, all cops of bastards, as their, oh, their splash page for their product. And, oh, uh, ten car is into censoring. No, ten car is uh, into keeping your politics out of your 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 non political products. But hey, um, depictions or descriptions of criminal violence against children, rape, or other acts of criminal perversion, or other obscene material without the express written permission of one bookshelf. Illegal and infringing content is not allowed. It is the content creator's responsibility to ensure that their content does not violate laws or copyright, trademark, privacy, or other rights. Okay. That's almost standard boilerplate, although there is that, you know, other obscene material. That's that catch-all, right? But I expect that. 
Every time a title is reported on our site that might be breaking these rules, our policy is to pull that title down for an internal review by our staff, which normally takes up to two weeks. This is invariably a difficult part of the job. We abhor censorship and we'll always lean toward allowing rather than banning titles. All right, I appreciate that. And I am not going to, uh, you know, make any claims that, that, that are, 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 I don't know, uh, in opposition to that statement. It's a good, it, it sounds to me like a pretty strong statement. Sometimes, though, publishers deliberately push this boundary. They certainly do. Knowing full well that their title will be reported and deactivated for review, and then it will be reflected badly on drive through RPG when it happens. I am going to uh, put this piece out there. This is my opinion. But if in your marketing on your blog post, you say basically, get this while you can, because you can be sure it's going to get pulled, um, you're playing the system. My opinion. I, I could be wrong. You might disagree. If you disagree, comment below. I'd love to. I'd love to hear it. But if that's part of your marketing, then you're marketing with the idea that your your release is going to get pulled from the marketplace, the default marketplace, one bookshelf. Um, then why are you publishing it on one bookshelf if you know they're going to pull it, right? It's like why, like. What, what, why blow a why why take a red light in front of a marked patrol car if you know you're going to get stopped? Why why so you can? Whoa, but my hey, my brother's on the job. I'll just I'll just show a courtesy card and, and get off. No, you won't. Because you're an asshole. It doesn't work that way. Um, I just I just say certain things I just don't understand. This behavior in itself is malicious, but it's compounded when the publisher also builds this launch report deactivation pattern into their marketing plans. Since stirring up controversy brings them attention and thus they presume more sales. This marketing ploy depletes time and resources, both professional and emotional, from both our customer service and publisher relation teams each time it happens, invariably far out of proportion to any benefit we see from selling such titles. I'm going to has it a guess that when this stuff happens, their whole team has to get involved in the process of, all right, did we pull this? What do we do? Even if it's, you know, one of those, it's like, oh man, this is such a violation of the terms because, you know, there's going to be blowback. So I'm sure everybody gets involved in it. In short, we are not interested in being the scapegoat for any publisher who wishes to repeatedly market market titles via attempting to generate outrage toward us. And then they go on to other concerns. I don't really think it's all, all that important. But basically they're saying let's talk. I, I'm Again, I don't have an issue with anything I've read here except for the very vague or poorly worded social media. I know I, I media behavior section. I know Steve said that this is basically an explanation, but the explanation still needs a lot of explain explaining, in my humble opinion. Okay. Again, I'd like to hear your thoughts, folks. It's important. This wasn't what I planned on doing today. Again, one of the taverners, I sat down after a vet visit, just to check up for the dog, still raked us over the coals. Holy crap. Um, uh, came back, saw this in my uh, in my mailbox, so to speak, and I was like, shit, all right. Well, this is this is now. This is news up to date. I figured it was time to get it out there. I could have sat on it for a day or so. It's not as relevant then, right? Because you can see videos from James Raggy, um, from uh, Grim Jim, from Wenger, from others, talking about this. And, and their opinions are certainly interesting. And they're certainly valid opinions from their perspective. This is one bookshelf trying to explain. I don't know if it's going to be an explanation. That's going to meet everybody's needs. I will, however, link this um, as a pin post and in the description of this episode. So you can easily find it and read the full, uh, I don't know, release update at your leisure. Folks, 
We are still in the midst of the world of COVID. I know it isn't what it was. I know. It's like an also ran right now. However, you're all adults. Theoretically, use your common sense. You know, if Woody had got, just gone to the police, this never would have happened. Well, if you just use your common sense, you could actually avoid a lot of negative issues in your life. Um, be safe, be well, God bless, roll those dice, roll them well, and I will, I could be back again later today. I don't know. Uh, tomorrow was supposed to be a live stream, but I'm hearing that Glenn may have laryngitis, and that's the, if that's the case, it might not be a live stream. We'll see. All right, folks. Oh, and we got some stuff to give away. I might have to do another video later today. I have, I, already, I teased it yesterday that we've got dungeon crawl cards to give away. And if you want a card, just email me at 10cars.tavern at gmail.com. We're going to be mailing them out, um, signed and numbered from the 10 car collection of the uh, Dungeon Crawl board game. Because apparently most people aren't getting it shipped to them, so we might as well put it in people's hands. What we can. Okay. So, uh, but there'll be more on that probably on the blog side and probably a video. They, I think do a real unboxing. So, all right, folks. Thank you so much.